Australia scored a major hit both here and in England with Three Little Pigs, the group's debut single and video. Now the group has drafted two members of KISS and beloved cult actress Karen Black to work on a new video, and we stopped by to watch. Oh, big little pig left me in. That's gonna be in a new Party Shaw movie. I've never been on the farm before, but I've been in LA where I milked a couple of heifers. Um, yeah, my mom's here. Anybody else? Oh, Gene Simmons, he's here. On a serious note, I'd like to say some people will do anything to get attention. <laughs> Brian Allen is here. Where is he? I think they're really neat. Green jelly sucks. Little pig, little pig, let me in. I got all day long, motherfucker. Hi. Where's our money? Uh, let's go get it. Yep, let's go get it right now. All right. Because he runs out that back door, he's going to get his ass kicked. Remember this next time you book my fucking band and you decide not to pay me and t*** off. Place to sleep. Get in the sleep fucking in. car. Have that fucking luxury. Get in there. I'm sorry. Yeah, dude. well, move the fuck over. <laughs> dude, do you know who the fuck I am? I do know who you are, and I... Dude, I found your fucking ass, all right? Yeah, that's fucking... All right, and you're in the fucking, fucking car with us. We had to burden just to fucking find where you are, you stupid fuck. No, I didn't go buy drugs. Dude. Fuck you, you're a lying piece of shit. Man, do not push my fucking envelope right now, all right? Because Three I will, fucking hours, I will you fucking absent. bury fucking you alive. Now let me make one thing clear. I am a fan of green jelly. Have been since I was a kid, and I got in trouble for drawing shit man in third grade. I've hung out with Bill and interviewed him a few times. I even had the chance to open for him and drew some flyers and shit. Good times. Now I'm not making this video to hate on them, but to simply chronicle this weird group and try to figure out why their popularity dropped so rapidly in the 90s, as the group proved to be pioneers in the music industry and had huge mainstream exposure for a while there, with things like video game soundtracks and innovative music videos and even a Grammy nod, proving Green Jello was a force to be reckoned with in the 90s alternative scene, which, if you remember, was kind of a weird and wild time in the early 90s where bands like this could really thrive. No, 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 I'm not here to hate on Green Jelly even though I think their current status is lacking and maybe uh, even a little lazy, but you gotta respect them. So sit back, have a bowl of orange crunch, and subscribe to Staunch TV, and I'll try not to spend too much time on redundant or obvious little factoids as we take a look at the legendary Green Jelly. Buffalo, New York, 1981. A young delinquent heartthrob by the name of Bill Manspeaker forms a punk rock comedy group called Green Jello, with some other very bad musicians, with the goal of being the world's worst band. And seeing as they were all completely lacking musical talent, it was not an out of reach goal to have. They would go on to become kind of infamous for their rowdy shows, and eventually they were banned from nearly every club in the area. However, they would find a home at the Continental Club and began to use props and bigger theatrics to build their following, which ultimately led to their first big break, so to speak, an opening spot with the greatest band to have ever existed, the Ramones. Which, of course, left the stage and the Ramones' equipment covered in filth thrown from the crowd, and the band received possibly the best quote any band could ask for, from Joey Ramone himself being quoted as saying, they are the worst band to ever open for the Ramones. In 1984, the band released EP Let It Be, featuring a number of later re-recorded Green Jelly tracks, all done in Bill's bedroom. 
The EP was limited to 500 copies and had an endorsement from Paul Stanley in the lighter notes. To celebrate the release, the band threw a show and taped copies of the EP to a tree in front of the club and had fans climb to retrieve their copies. They would go on to do more and more elaborate stage shows, adopt crazy monikers, and even appear on the gong show. Come on, up here we go. Yeah, green jello. This is a terrific act. I, I find versatility with this. I find all kinds of great things. You've been gonged, and, and I, I really think that's what they were here for. Here, let me, let me point you right over here. Here you go. Bill and some other members then moved to Los Angeles, and it was while working at Tower Records they began to make connects, like meeting Guar and learning new costume techniques. They then reformed the band playing their first show in Hollywood at what is now the Viper Room. In 1989, the band would unleash their next release, Triple Live Mother Goose at Budokan, recorded in a garage, featuring some tracks, again later re-recorded, which would be some of the band's biggest hits, as well as a much more tight and involved sound, adding crucial members like drummer Danny Carey, aka Danny Longlegs of Tool fame, and Joe Canizaro, a.k.a. Dunderhead, and Kim O'Donnell, a.k.a. Sadistica, who designed and created all the artwork, covers, comics, and logos for the band. It would be there in the Green Jelly Loft where a young Maynard James Keenan saw the early success of the group and would soon begin writing rough ideas for Tool songs and eventually performing at the Green Jello Party Loft for all the after parties. After thriving in the underground scene, the band was approached by Zoo Records, and after falling for Green Jelly's bluff on claiming to be the world's first video-only band, they received a $50,000 record deal to produce all of their content, from music to videos, all on their own. And they had to get to work. One year later, the band released their third album, Serial Killer, this time recorded at the famed Sound City Studios, and the band lived up to the bluff and it was done as an all-video album, the first of its kind, consisting of music videos for each song as well as a behind-the-scenes feature. The video album slowly gained a reputation in the underground and would eventually go on to sell over 100,000 copies. But their break ironically came when a radio station in Seattle, Washington played Three Little Pigs as a joke, but instead the station's phones lit up and it became a local hit. This caused Zoo Records to issue the EP Green Jello Sucks, consisting of four songs from Serial Killer, which in turn led to Three Little Pigs becoming a huge hit. And they blew up after appearing on MTV's Headbangers Ball to promote the video album. Starting to go on tour so everybody can experience Green Jello Live, which is unlike any other band live. Tell me about live plans right now. Um, we're going on the tour with Testament and Propane, yeah! Rock and Rollers started April 2nd for two, not one, but two Rock and Roll months, yeah, party time. The band went in 1993 recording a single with Hulk Hogan, a cover of a Gary Glitter tune, becoming a top 40 hit in the UK. Come on, come on, come on, come on. 1994 would be a mixed bag. The band began a joint venture with $4 million from their parent company, BMG Music, to open Green Jelly Studios. They would produce content for other bands and record their next album, 333, in their own studios. They would once again plan and produce a long-form video for the album, but it was never properly released and remains extremely hard to find. However, the band's single, The Bear Song, would go on to appear in the hit film, Dumb and Dumber. The single failed its chart, but the long-form video did get nominated for a Grammy, even though it, again, was never properly really released. Good going. They would again pioneer in the industry by producing the soundtrack for the game, Maximum Carnage, and appearing in the Fantastic Four cartoon. Hey man, are you ready to rehearse your big number? You got it ready, baby. And they would record a cover of Born to Be Wild 
for the film of the same name. Ugh. The band would then record another album in 1995, but due to the label going under, it was shelved for over a decade. Things would remain quiet for a while, the band popping up here and there in pop culture and soundtracks and such. Everybody's a suspect! But we wouldn't get anything new from the band until 2009, when rumors began about a reunion and a big tour and new album and new music and such. Announcements on MySpace exciting fans from all around the world. The band would release Music to Insult Your Intelligence by in 2009. The album was actually a collection of the Lost Demos from 1995. The album was still kind of fun, but lacking all the same. However, the band would play some high-profile shows in the following years and get some huge exposure, touring with bands like Nashville Pussy and Psycho Stick and even Guar, playing stints on work tours and even being featured in a commercial for Shell Gasoline. Shell is helping to deliver cleaner burning natural gas to more countries than any other energy company. But it just wasn't the same. Fans soon noticed gone were the days of classic green jelly. But did it really matter? By 2011, Bill realized that he had fans all over the world and could use them to start franchise bands to make touring easier basically flying around the world with bands willing to jam with them and shows booked. Not a bad idea, really. And with this tactic, they have been possibly the longest running touring band in history. But I don't know, man. I've seen them live about six times, and it's basically the same thing over and over. A bare bones band pulling off the same tracks and the same rehearsed dialogues. I mean, Bill's a funny dude and he puts on a great show. But I just want more for my green jelly, you know? I think all of his fans were hankering for some new tunes. I mean, Bill went out of his way to set up a whole universe of characters before. What's up with those guys? Where's the classic members? Surely they'd be down for an appearance or something, right? Then, after 22 years, the band will release a brand new music video. I remember actually kind of being stoked for this. A Grammy-nominated video band releasing a new video. Okay, hell yeah, let's do this. Like I said, lacking. Cool, but just lacking. The band released a fan-made documentary chronicling a five-day Canadian tour. And it is a really fun watch. I would go track that down immediately. They would then get some exposure with the guys at Trailer Park Boys, as well as release a brand new single. While it's not my cup of tea, it is a pretty cool return to form. Maybe I'm being too harsh on it. Maybe it's just the small town shows that I go to that seem redundant. I mean, recently Three Little Pigs was performing with Danny Carey and Maynard James Keenan to a lot of people. And they have done a lot of really big shows with ICP, getting all up in that fan base, Doing whatever they have to do, really, now that the days of MTV and $50,000 advances were long gone. Yeah, that being said, I'm pretty sure all these small town gigs are what really pays the bills. It was this way of doing business that would get Green Jelly some of the biggest exposure of the past decade. This time, from world star hip-hop. Here's the gist of what went down. 
Howdy kids, punk rock puppet master at the house of the guy who ripped us off. Little pig, little pig, let me in. I got all day long. Little pig, little pig, let me in. Where's our money? Uh, let's go get it. Yep, let's go get it right now. All right, one second. Don't close that fucking door. All right, let's leave it. Cool, we're gonna go get it right now. Yeah. Cool, easy as that. Punk Rock Puppet Master. I'm here in Toronto or uh, London, Canada. I'm outside the door of the promoter who took off with our money last night. And we're collecting it. Because I ain't the fucking guy to fuck with. Because you don't fuck with me and my family. Remember this next time you book my fucking band and you decide not to pay me and take off. Stealing money out of my fucking kid's mouth. And you better start fucking bringing shit outside. You better start bringing shit outside so we can go to the goddamn fucking pawn place. Because I ain't fucking around. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I know where you live, motherfucker. You know, I got in a goddamn plane and flew three fucking thousand miles, left my fucking family, and you took off on us last night, left us no place to fucking sleep? We're going to go get the money, or we're going to fucking burn everything in your house. That would be fair. All right, it is going to be fucking fair. Totally fair, dude. I do dude, what kind of fucking person does it? If you didn't have the fucking money, you should have said it before I got in that fucking plane. Dude, I'm fucking sorry, man. Dude, do you know that I have a fucking family? Why aren't you answering your phone if you're so fucking sorry? My phone's Three fucking thousand fucking miles. Phone Why is your fucking phone Wait. not on? Three thousand miles. All you fucking had to say last night was, dude, I'm sorry, I don't have the cash, and you would have gave us what you fucking had, where but did, you stole you what we had. Last night? Because if you don't get that fucking money, I am You're busting your fucking legs. What kind of scumbag are you? You're going to get it out of Jimmy. The guy who owns the bar, he's not your fucking dad. No, but he does lend me money sometimes. Yeah, he better oh, lend you wow. money today. I'm telling you right I now, motherfucker, because I know where you live. I came to your fucking house. And, and then you walk and you just leave last night? I left all the money there. Shit, nobody knew. No, I know. Jimmy saw it on his way out. <laughs> no, he didn't. There. We didn't. It, I left with him. We, we stayed left here with him. Night. Okay, we well, stayed he, here until he left. All right, here he we are. Yeah, well, well, he saw it. Well, we're, we're going to find out if you saw it right now. Okay. And if you're fucking lying, I'm busting your nose. Okay? It's, it's totally fair, man. All right. Just so you know, I'm going to ask him, and if he says something else, this fucking fist, now, this fucking, this fucking, fucking fist is going to bust your dollars. fucking nose. Coming to you live, punk rock puppet master. I'm here at the venue that we played last night that this scumbag motherfucker took off with all the money. And uh, we're going to try to... This is read, a good this one. Good. This is a good one. Kick him in the dick. <laughs> he doesn't got one. He's a woman. <laughs> Well, that Fuck that guy. You played with me back in 2016 and you are the coolest, nicest guy. Fuck those people that take advantage of you. That dude is a prick. How many messages are you getting? Oh, dude, it's nonstop. I'm getting offers from around the world to come kick your ass. And this isn't the first time they've had to deal with shit like this. Crazy, man. I'd say overall, the reason they dropped off was partly the folding of Zoo Records and partly Bill Manspeaker being the sole member and leader of the group. Meaning that when the other members would leave or get kicked out or whatever, eventually Bill was left without any musical talent standing behind him. Can't really write Green Jelly songs without any good guitarists and bassists and shit that they're known for. And overall, motivated live and studio members. So while I enjoy Green Jelly, I'd be lying if I said most of it isn't based on pure nostalgia. 
And well, maybe they are just another nostalgia-based band playing the hits with just one original member left. But that's okay. Bill is doing what he wants to do, playing shows all over the fucking world and raising his family all the while. And when talking to Bill, you don't get any sense of wash-up or failure or anything the uninformed may be thinking, but rather you get a sense of a guy who's really accomplished it all, who's still doing it his own fucking way, who got everywhere he went on his own two booted feet. Hello there, Mr. Space Ghost, where are you? And just who are you supposed to be? I'm 100% stupid! I will continue to watch and see what happens in the saga of Green Jelly. And if I offended any fans, just know, I have nothing but love and respect for Green Jelly. I just, honestly, wish it was a little better. Guess that's it. When it comes to weird bands I loved as a kid, and still kinda do, I can go on and on. But I won't.